slow motion of a handful of athletes that you will not see for the remainder of the video. It's only fitting that this was in the first 15 seconds of the movie because you're about to watch a handful of stuff shot from angles that you don't understand why they're shooting from those angles. Coming into 2021, the only thing for certain that was someone else's turn to make the climb. Oh boy, I can't wait to watch a two hour video where I'm hopefully watching all of these younger athletes compete. Right? Right? Yo, fittest on earth, next gen documentary. Released. What do you think about the releasing of this? What I think, what I suppose I hoped for is a pumping up, a celebration of the sport, the methodology. It's a promotional video for the methodology and it's a way to look back on the last year, have fond memories of it, move forward onto this year. That's what I hope for. But what we've gotten over and over and over again is a whole bunch of garbage from the fittest on earth, next gen documentary. I found something in post-production that I think is worth mentioning right here. Heller, did you know that there's a new CrossFit Games documentary? Yeah. So the documentary was $14.99 pre-order. Okay. And then five days before, a couple days ago, I guess the movie's coming out in a couple days, uh, a couple days ago, they lowered the price to $9.99. So all the people who bought it for $14.99 were like the early adopters, the fans, the people who wanted to support CrossFit, who were so excited they couldn't wait. I mean, pre-ordering is the dumbest thing in the world. I've done it before. Don't get me wrong. But it's got to be the dumbest thing in the world to do because it's a digital pre-order. You're not going to get it any faster than anyone else. It's not like pre-ordering a shirt so you can get the first run. It's just pre-ordering <laughs> a digital. Asset. But then CrossFit lowers the price of the movie to $9.99 five days before, which is kind of like a fuck you to the whole fan base who like paid early to this corporation that's a Berkshire corporation. And when I worked there, they tried to do that. What? Gravitas was like, hey, we're going to lower the price of the movie um, when I used to make those docs, produce those docs that Heber and Marsden directed, they would say, hey, we're going to lower the price of the movie right before it comes out to sell more. I'm like, no, you're not. And I would always be like, they'd be like, why? I'm like, it shows no integrity, no loyalty to your base. But they fucking did that this year. Are and they going to bump it back up when they release it? Who the fuck? No, you know what they're going to do next? You know what their next playbook is? In a month, package it with last year's movie and sell it for four ninety nine. It's what it is. Is it shows completely where they're focused at. It's not about bringing value to the audience. It's a hundred percent just about how many dollars they could extract from the audience, and then that's and that pisses people off because they realize it. Travis said that he had tinfoil hat for situations like this, so. It's on. That video was done on the 3rd of July, right? And I was sitting there and I hadn't heard any of this and I was like, all right, there's no way. There's no way that they would do that. It seems so stupid. Fitness on Earth Next Gen came out July 5th. We were doing that on July 3rd. I've got a website that I will frequent and just look at the price deviations in movies that are released, all movies that are released. And you'll see right here that on the 8th, it was $14.99, just like Sevon said. And then three days before our podcast right there, maybe four days before our podcast, they didn't D drop it to $9.99. And then almost like they were watching this Evan podcast, listening to, oh my God, they're onto us. They know, they know, they know. They're, they're freaking onto us. We gotta get the fuck out of here. And then they come back and they're like, okay, guys, it's $14.99. I hope that nobody bought it at $9.99. They're gonna piss everybody off. They know that they're onto us. But what I would be waiting for if I were you guys is I would be waiting for that package deal that Sivan also brought up. Their next playbook is in a month, package it with last year's movie and sell it for $4.99. Because if they were indeed listening, which I do believe that they were listening, it was no coincidence. We don't believe in coincidences that the price came up at the exact date of that podcast back up to $14.99 from the $9.99 that Sivan was talking about. So wait for the package deal if you do want to buy it or you can watch the video and find out somewhere else that you can watch it it started before it was even released so i have a handful of things that i want to bring up here but the first thing is that we expect something cool awesome and maybe a lot of you guys have gotten that and if that's the case i'm sorry that i'm about to bring up the stuff that has been bad about the fittest on earth next gen documentary you know that's kind of my job i bring up the things that other people might not bring up and it's all going to be in one spot right here the first thing that you hear about the fittest on earth next gen documentary is actually from brian friend who has a pretty level head about things in relation to the trailer for this. So before it was even released, there was a trailer and the trailer, there was very little Dave Castro. Lots of Dave Castro talk over the past year or whatever. Did they leave him out on purpose? Brian put up that post, just him talking on his Instagram. And then he actually spoke to the people in charge of making the documentary, the directors, the writers, whatever. That's Mariah Moore. We're going to talk more about her later, but he had a lot of clarification through that conversation. And then he made a follow-up post about Dave asked to not be put into the documentary 
documentary all that much. He actually seconded that on a story he put up the other day. He didn't want the story to be the same thing over and over and over again. There are now five or six of these videos, maybe seven, I don't know, including the Froning documentary. Enough with the Dave Castro, he said, go with somebody else. Brian made a follow-up story, post, Instagram, whatever, and it should have been all in a box and put away. The biggest issue with CrossFit right now is that no one knows where to be getting information from, so where do you hear that it was Dave Castro to be the one to say that he didn't want it? You got to follow him on Instagram? What if you missed his Instagram story that's only up for 24 hours? Did you sign up for the Hopper? It's like, how the fuck do I sign up for the Hopper? Where do we get this information? Andrew puts up a video every day in his everyday video. Now you know that Dave didn't want to be in this thing, so stop with your negative comments about, where's Dave? Where's Dave? Where's Dave? He didn't want to be in it, okay? That's thing number one. Thing number two, I was watching this two-hour video, right? And about 30 minutes into the film, I was like, wow, this is raunchy. Fuck, that's what I said. You just gotta fucking go, and who's gonna fucking take this? Shit. I really fucking wanted it. Uh, great effort. Fuck. And I almost shit myself on that last bar all over the floor. There's a lot of swearing. I had to make a story about it. I couldn't like wait to make this video to talk about it because I'm making it two weeks after I watched it at this point. And all I could think is, okay, this is not typical. Very atypical here. It's as if you went to go watch Finding Nemo and you brought your freaking five-year-old along. It's like, we're gonna watch this movie about a fish that finds its way back home. And then the beginning of it, remember the mom, I think the mom gets killed by a barracuda. And it's, you know, you know what happened, but it's kind of behind the scenes. And it's almost like you watch that barracuda rip the freaking mom apart and you're like oh my god don't look it's like don't look at this that's how i felt as i was watching the fittest on earth next gen you hear people like annie thor started just littering swear words onto the screen over and over it's like fuck shit ah! fuck like, okay that's not how i'm used to watching these it's just not what i expected i swear all the time look i just swore a bunch but it's what you come to expect with it you hear pat Vellner talking about the fact that he couldn't hold in his crap in one of these events it's like all right that's also a little raunchy why is that what's being included here. Brought up Mariah Moore when talking about Brian Friend, and maybe that's the person that he spoke to in relation to the Fist on Earth Next Gen documentary. She put up a post the other day. I'll read it for you guys. Maybe it was two days ago or yesterday, but the post reads, addressing the audio mastering language censorship on the 21 Games doc. To say this has been an absolutely devastating problem would be a massive understatement. After a couple of weeks of digging, it has been revealed to us that a third-party distribution company that we work with unnecessarily went rogue and switched out the finalized audio I had sent for an uncensored, not fully mixed version. I was not consulted on this, and so here we stand, working tirelessly to resolve an issue that would not have existed in the first place. The problem is being solved, but will take a couple of weeks to reflect these changes. If it has impacted your viewing experience, I am sincerely sorry and hope you will all rewatch it in a couple of weeks at its full glory. It's interesting about what I'm going to bring up next. This is a back-end fix, meaning if you already purchased the film, you will not have to repurchase it. Your download will simply be updated. Okay, so, Ryan Moore, go to the Gravitas Ventures website. They're the production company that made this documentary, that being the fittest on Earth Next Gen. You'll see that she is the director, she is the writer, and then they have a cast. And I'll talk about that cast later, but you look at the cast, and it's like, okay, they have a cast. Huh. That's actually my first time seeing that as I'm making this video right now. Talk about it later. Though, because I want to finish up the harsh language. Two weeks later, they're going to fix it. A couple of weeks later, I believe she says that they're going to fix it. Everyone's seen it. Everyone has now seen athletes in a certain light. Maybe they didn't want to see them in that light. They were expecting certain things. I'm not going to watch it again after I make this video. I don't think I can watch a single another one of these videos again. And the reason for that is who are these supposed to be made for? I think that I have a rather good background on every event that they've ever done of the CrossFit Games. I'd say that I'm in the top 5%, if not in the top 1% of people in the world who know things about the events that per were performed and who finished where at the games. I'm well informed on that. I watch these things and I have a hard time following. I remember the events, but the way that they jump around, show the athletes at random points and talk about things, it's not marketed towards people like me. And then I put myself into the shoes of someone who just walked into the CrossFit gym and they're like, okay, I'm going to watch the fittest on earth next gen. You don't understand what the hell is going on. Go, okay, they're going to swim. They're going to do that. Oh, look, a clean and jerk. I think I learned that yesterday. And by the time you piece together what's going on, they're already on to the next event. And you're just looking at a whole bunch of jacked people. Is that what they're trying to do? You want to show a whole bunch of jacked people? Who's Tia Toomey? Who's Justin Medeiros? A little blurb at the bottom say that she's won four times in a row. What are the next gen people? Matt Fraser? Okay, he was seemed like a big name. They showed a little blurb of Matt Fraser. Uh, the next gen, is that Justin Medeiros? Is he going to win over and over? Why do they keep on showing Patrick Vellner and Andy Thor's daughter and Brent Fikowski and Adrian Bosman? Like, who are these people? You just don't know what's going on. So are they trying to 
show it for people like me? Are they trying to show it for the newbies? And are there people in the world who sit in the middle who just have a good time enjoying this stuff? That's kind of my question for you. When you watch this, do you feel as if you finished it and you had a good viewing experience? Because honestly, I don't know. I imagine that the new people come in, they don't know what the fuck is going on. I imagine people like myself and maybe Brian Friend are watching it and it's almost just like a two hour wash because it's all things that you know and you don't really learn or pick up anything new from it. And if anything, what I picked up from this was that there are potty mouths on a couple of athletes that I wouldn't have expected to have had potty mouths and that's unfortunate. I brought up the whole it's going to be remastered in a couple of weeks things. Well, South Africa, I covered it a couple of days ago. Lisa, remember her? She was on the team that finished first at the fittest in Cape Town and the drug testing was kind of all fucked up. She was on my YouTube channel talking about it and it appears as if there's an individual in South Africa who put up the entire fittest on earth next gen documentary before it was remastered, of course. In its whole glory and at the time in which I made this, it's got 1.7 thousand views, which will equate to, if you do it, by $15 per iTunes store purchase, $25,000 that has possibly been pulled out of the CrossFit Games or Gravitas Ventures pocket. So I've been making these videos one at a time, 160 of them or so, but I would have to bet that in just one fell swoop, they pull $25,000 out of the pockets of CrossFit and that's not going to make them all that happy. Maybe they'll actually do something. Maybe they sent a message. They're going to do something that I've been trying to do this whole time, but I don't want to do it as aggressively because I'm not trying to burn CrossFit. I just want them to listen and I want to help. There's so pissed off that they went for the freaking head. You should have gone for the head. We're gonna post your brand new documentary and we're gonna pull a bunch of money from you. Here's the whole thing. I don't know why it's still on YouTube, but if you do want to watch it, go ahead and watch it over there, I guess, until they pull it down. If I put up any videos on here, I've pulled it off of that. How many of these videos have there been? I know that they made one year after year starting in what, 2016, and then they had Froning, and then they had a year off. But what I know is that when you watch the other sports, NFL, NBA, anything, they don't have anything like this, where they try to cover, all encompass everything that happened in a weekend because I think that it's damn near impossible. And it appears that they try to do a good job of this by having Laura Horvath, Patrick Vellner, Annie Thor's daughter, Brent Fikowski, Tia Toomey, Justin Medeiros as the figureheads for the video. But some of the best stories were told outside of those athletes. They don't bring up Daniel Brandon at all. I mean, they briefly brought up the fact that she needed to compete while having the mask over because her teammates tested positive for COVID, but they don't show her giving the finger to the crowd. That was one of the coolest moments at the CrossFit Games. They spend too much time following around a whole bunch of other athletes and maybe it's because it's impossible to cover everything that happened in that weekend in a two-hour video. Is there a better way to do it? I think that I really enjoyed the Behind the CrossFit Games 2014 where it's just a blurb here, a blurb here, a blurb here, a blurb here. And if you were on the CrossFit Journal, you would see a handful of 50 to 60-minute uh, videos talking about a couple of days. It's a little less produced, which I think is a good thing because I could give three shits about watching the athletes swim in slow motion in the water or watching all of these odd angled muscle ups where you see like the athletes popping through like, at the top of a muscle up. I just don't know what they're going for. I've never really understood these documentaries. As I've said, who are they making them for? And I don't really think that the way that they make them has a place. I would bet that the only reason they keep making them is because people spend the money on them to watch these. So what the hell am I even talking about? What do I know? I don't see the numbers on the back end. And you know what? I watch them every year. I'll tell you that the only reason I watch this one was because I love CrossFit. I wanted to probably make a video on this, which I'm doing right now, but it sure as fuck was not because I looked forward to watching a well-produced documentary. And I'm not trying to shit on Mariah Moore because I don't know her, but I've never seen one of these and walked away as a better informed individual with the CrossFit ecosystem because I watched a Fittest on Earth documentary. And I think that that's the issue. When I make these videos, I want you to walk away with something that you may have not known before. I try to do it in a about 10 minutes. And in two hours, what did I learn? T is cocky as all fuck. I learned that any Thor starter's got a potty mouth. They aren't going to change anything because they have no reason to change things because everyone's going to buy the documentary anyway. Did you watch it? What do you think? Is it as much of a mess in the world as I think it is? And honestly, what I wanted to do is I want to put in little bits and kind of overlap it with my voice. And maybe I'll do that later. But right now, I just want to give my general thoughts on the Fitness on Earth Next Gen documentary. Share yours in the comments. Andrew Hiller out.